This is the naturalistic observation as done by Kathleen Doyle. Specifics of this naturalistic observation was taken place at a Montessori school in a middle income area of Colorado Springs. It was first through third grade class, six to eight year olds. First note, older kids helped the younger kids. This is a common practice in Montessori school. One of the things that I noticed was the older kids in third grade were helping the younger kids in first and second grade. As they were helping them, I saw that the older kids would basically be doing all the work for them. And I was slightly concerned, like the kid isn't learning because the older kid is doing all the work. I talked to the teacher about it. They said that this actually helps reinforce what the children, the older children have learned, but helps the younger kids learn as well. They're still learning. As I learned more about it through our studies in class, I realized that imitation and guided participation kind of play a role in this type of learning. So the guided participation is basically cognitive growth results from children's involvement in structured activities with others who are more skilled than them in that activity. Therefore, the third grader is more skilled. They are walking the first grader through this and the first grader learns, okay, this is how this girl did it. I'm gonna do it that way as well. Another thing I noticed was mostly girls sat with girls and boys sat with boys. This was during snack time. Girls were with girls, boys were, were with boys. They actually sat at desks. So at the Montessori school, when they're actually working and not doing snack time, they can, they can move all over the classroom. They can set up rugs on the floor and work on the floor if they want. They can work at desks if they want. It just depends on how they prefer to do it. Uh, during snack, they're very much sitting at desks. And at those desks, they can um, sit with others. And the majority of them, there were a few exceptions, but the majority of them were girls sitting with girls and boys sitting with boys. This, uh, this plays into our text as well, um, talking about... Why do boys and girls seem so attracted to same-sex play partners? The first reason is self-selection by sex. Boys and girls want to play with others like themselves, and after they know their sex, they pick others on that basis. Second, boys and girls differ in their style of play. Boys prefer rough-and-tumble play and generally are more competitive and dominating in their interactions. In contrast, girls' play is more cooperative, pro-social, and conversation-oriented. Generally, boys don't enjoy the way girls play, and girls are adverse to boys' style of play. So this was evident um, in a future interaction, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, yeah, another interaction, boys were more physically active during their learning time. So we, so I came in during math. They were learning their math session and then eventually went into snack time. But during math, again, they had mats on the floor, rugs on the floor, and all sorts of different tools to use to learn these math problems here. The boys, when they were helping each other, they were physically active. They were touching each other, hitting each other with cards, poking each other, that type of thing. Girls looked a lot like the girl in the picture here, sitting at a desk, writing away. Uh, they have the option to get earphones to drown out the sound of the other kids talking and figuring things out. So there were several girls with at their desk with earphones on, um, noise-canceling earphones, to, to be able to do this. Rough and tumble play. So there is a difference of this in girls and boys, and I noticed this in the classroom. So with the girls... Their type of rough and tumble play, this is something that um, I read about in an article that I'll I'll quote here at the end, that I'll cite here at the end, but it they both boys and girls participate in rough and tumble play, um, but it's a different type. Girls, it's more individual. So girls, like it says here, dancing while standing in line, hopping to get their supplies, swinging arms back and forth while walking, but it's not physically interactive with others, where boys, it's the opposite. Like we've discussed in the previous slides, they are touching each other while interacting with their work. They're still getting work done, um, but, you know, then they're, well, if they're not actually getting work done, then they're actually physically touching each other and pushing and shoving, and, uh, but it's all playful and non-aggressive. There was an interaction with a boy and a girl where a where two boys were 
trying or were playing they were playing spider-man or something i don't i don't know exactly but it seemed like they were playing spider-man because i saw the little hand web things going and a little girl was trying to get one of these boys attention and so she was patting him on the head very gently and that nothing he wouldn't even like i think he might have glanced her way slightly but then was not even didn't even care moved on kept playing with the boys spider-man stuff you know throwing his webs at him and you know shoving him around and then the girl noticed that wasn't working uh his hand happened to be on the ground so she she was like patting his hand with her foot trying to get his attention and nothing would get his attention so there are instances of course there's always instances where children or where girls are physically interactive my I, yeah um so it's not 100% across the board that girls are never physically touch boys or whatever. But the majority of the time, girls are more individual. They they like to be a little more gentle, where boys are very physically active and rough. There was a girl that I labeled skeptic girl. Uh, she displayed egocentrism and pre-operational thought. She was very cute, looked at me with these skeptical eyes, but uh, just curious. Why are you here? She asked me. I, I replied, I'm just watching. Uh, later, she s sees me writing in my notebook, and she says, curiously, how can you be watching if you're writing? <laughs> of course, I laughed at that. Um, but that is a display of pre-operational thought where things are very con concrete. Our text talks about that, where they, they, don't, um, they don't understand concepts that, you know, I can be watching and writing at the same time. I can be doing both. Uh, later she, she warmed up to me and was like, I know why you're here. It's because you're wanting to have a kid come to this school and you're just looking at the classroom. I, I had another parent come into our classroom who did that. And then they had a kid that they sent here because they watched us, which that is the egocentrism in play. They see one thing and that's how it is for everyone. There was a distracted boy that I thought was absolutely adorable, just worth mentioning. Don't fully know what was going on with him. The one thing that I can say that he displayed from our text was private speech. Um, he would talk to himself while he was sitting at his desk, but he was not sitting at his desk very often. He would be walking around talking to others. He would be um, waving at kids that were in the in, outside of the classroom, you know, um, he'd be playing with his eraser. Basically, he looked kind of like this kid uh, in the picture here. Um, eventually, he was sent to another classroom to complete his work, but he did exhibit the, the private speech where he was talking to himself. So there is that. Works cited. So in the rough and tumble, in the rough and tumble play, the gender differences in rough and tumble play behaviors article is referenced, and that's by International Journal of Undergraduate Research and Creative Activities. And then, of course, our text Kale, uh, from Kale and Kavanaugh, A Human Development, A Lifespan View. Thank you.